Right, so I'm out in my car here, boys, my SX4. Uh, just the wee bit of study I was doing on the all-wheel drive system has actually uh, kind of tweaked my interest a wee bit. And um, uh, I thought I'd come out to the car and actually uh, uh, take a look at some of the uh, some of the details here. So uh, item 7 there is, in fact, the all-wheel drive control module itself there, boys. The four-wheel drive control module, excuse me, I, uh, is, in fact, the four -wheel called the four-wheel drive control module. And where it actually lives in the vehicle is actually right there right in front of the uh, information display panel uh, i've got the uh, the garnish trim removed um, you have to slack the the radio and then you can pull off the uh, the top piece there's two screws that secure it and then it's quite easy to access it so that's the four wheel drive control module that's where it lives actually right there so the connector they're showing on the drawing is right there and of course right on cue my neighbor starts his lawnmower so there, the uh, connector is oriented a wee bit different from the uh, from the drawing there, boys. But just so we can check our scope, uh, we're on 20 volt scale and we're on uh, uh, pin 12 there. So so long as we turn the ignition, we should get 12 volts. And we do. Pin 22, can bus high. Can bus high. Pin 23, boys, just the adjacent pin. That's CAN bus low. Unless we had uh, diagnostic of some sort on the go, um, we know that we weren't going to see anything on the K line. So you can see we have, uh, there is on the serial data bus there, there is uh, uh, some chat going on. Let me just minimize this. Turn off the V packer so there's no diagnostic going on, and the line will go quiet. Really, the uh, meat and potatoes of the issue is across pins uh, uh, two and three. Item one being the uh, magnetic uh, coil inside the uh, coupler assembly, of course. So, once again, uh, Suzuki are good enough to actually give us a reference waveform. And here's the, uh, the preconditions. So I am, in fact, across those two pins up there, boys. Okay, uh, I have something interesting to point out about that momentarily, though. Um, there's the, uh, it says five volts per division and 400 microseconds per division, right? Well, I don't have an option for 400 microseconds on my picoscope, but 500, let's call it good enough. And of course, this is, uh, uh, there's no selection. Well, you can change the mode, I guess, but I've got it on the 20 volt um, for the entire screen as far as the, the uh, uh, y-axis is concerned, the voltage scale. So um, the preconditions are engine is running at idle. And uh, we actually select the four-wheel lock switch, and we're, we don't have an automatic transmission model, so it says for the manual transmission, depress the accelerator pedal. So uh, check this out. Something interesting here that I wasn't expecting. So uh, let's meet our preconditions here. We'll get the car actually running. So the, uh, let me just turn that off. Um, four-wheel drive uh, mode selector I don't have my seatbelt on the park brake is engaged and I'm low on fuel so uh, I'm in two-wheel drive mode at the moment there boys so as you might well imagine I am in neutral um, there is no uh, signal on the coil because it shouldn't be it's in two-wheel drive mode of operation right so let me go down at the switch here I'll select auto we have the green enunciation. So uh, there's the coupling uh, signal. Um, I've got the duty cycle actually selected down at the bottom, although the values are pretty small and very difficult to see. So I'm just gonna touch the throttle just a wee bit. And you can see a, and you can see the duty cycle is increasing. That is to say some current is being applied to the coil uh, back at the coupler assembly. So I'm gonna step on it a little bit harder. And you can see there, continue to increase the RPM. Um, the duty cycle, the maximum duty cycle we can get there. See the minimum value? Um, the max and minimum, uh, that's about as far as we can go. It's just about 18% on the duty cycle. So that's not much, regardless of how high I actually uh, um, rev it. Again, the car is not moving, so obviously we're in just in a static condition here. But let's actually go into the four wheel lock mode. Hold it momentarily transitions into four-wheel lock you can see that on the annunciator there and as amber as you can see that's reminding you shouldn't be driving in that mode of operation it's just a get out of a ditch mode and even without touching the throttle 
I've got some coupling going on and you can see um, it's already at say 15% so I'm gonna step on the throttle and you can see the duty cycle is much wider right away you can see how wide the pulses are and you can see I'm gonna that seems to be about the maximum it will offer up um, stationary anyway and you can see it's considerably higher uh, actually about 37 uh, 37% duty cycle. I'm leaning on the passenger seat, so I'm getting the tone. So, yeah, so that's kind of interesting, boys. Um, let me go back to auto here. Back to the automatic mode. You can see there is no there is no signal being applied to the mag clutch until you actually touch the throttle, and when you release the throttle, it's gone completely. And the reason, of course, that it's applying that is although there's no slip um, when you initially take the car off from a stationary from a standstill uh, does it make sense that it will put it in a, a uh, all-wheel drive mode so you can maximize the traction I think so and then of course once the car gets rolling it'll assess the wheel speed and uh, and adjust the duty cycle from there so uh, yeah there you go so obviously the um, I'm not sure whether it's the engine RPM or the uh, APP or um, what signal is actually being sent to the four-wheel drive module over the CAN bus in order to determine that, but perhaps it's both, right? Uh, anyway, so that's it, boys. That's so just a quick look at it. Um, removing this plastic is actually a piece of piss. There's no need to be intimidated by that. It's uh, simple and straightforward. Um, just pop the, uh, the two garnish panels off initially. The rest is obvious as far as how the stack is and where the fasteners are. It's pretty simple, straightforward. That's the four wheel drive module right there, boys. So uh, I think we'll call it a day at, the, uh, at that. Um, I don't want to go driving with this because if these pins actually short and smoke this module, um, that would not be good for obvious reasons. So uh, I think I'll just leave it at that, boys. Leave it stationary. Um, I think we've got the gist of the idea anyway. Right, before I've had uh, too many beers and I forget to put it in the edit, um, take a look at the pin out here, boys, for the, uh, the coupler. You can see here that we have uh, 12 volts on uh, pin 3 and uh, there's a ground switch ground that goes on the uh, pin 2. Um, on the actual summary of the pin out below here, uh, they've actually got this reversed. And I can confirm that because uh, I used this uh, pin out summary and my waveform was actually uh, inverted. So um, this is incorrect. Um, and this, as per the schematic, is actually correct. And there's a second page in the manual that actually basically gives you a functional summary of the pinout. And uh, this is also correct. So just be aware, the little summary down here, incorrect with respect to the uh, power and ground.